What's up, gang? Carolina Jackpot checking in. It is Friday evening, about 9.05 p.m. And it's time for me to do part two of my picks against the spread for week number 10. Well, I was supposed to do these last night, and uh, I was just too damn tired to do it. I apologize. But I am going to do them tonight. Uh, I didn't mention in last night's video, last week went 12-8 and eight against the spread. I don't... I don't recall if I mentioned it or not. Uh, best win as far as those go, picked that uh, Iowa State upset over TCU. <laughs> Nailed that one on the head. So that one was pretty good. Uh, these games we're picking now already uh, as far as the games go for this week. I'm already 0 and 1 against the spread. The Navy uh, Temple game last night actually uh, missed out on that one. Temple's a lot better than I thought they were, and uh, they really brought it last night. Navy just looked uh, looked vanilla and sad. If any of y'all saw that, I don't. They have some plays that are just really slow to develop. They try to get the, they'll get the ball, they'll get it out on the edge, but the play just it, it's slow to develop, and 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 their backs will try to cut back to the inside and it just leaves them wide open to just get creamed i don't know if any of y'all watched that game last night there were some pads popping uh from the temple side that uh God, i didn't think they would could lay the wood like that but uh they certainly did and uh they pulled the mild upset i guess you'd call it a mild upset over navy game actually uh close uh at the end but uh Temple took care of business. So let's uh, get into the second half of these, the last 10 picks of the uh, week. And, uh, you know, I got some comments on the last video. If you don't like watching videos where I'm driving down the road and doing a video, then turn it off because that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's what I have to do uh, to get this done uh, and end time. Okay. So it's already way, way, way too late be doing this okay so we won't be doing any more of these like this hopefully uh, tomorrow I actually get off work at one o'clock so I'll be able to watch and enjoy these games uh, as they unfold most of them anyway uh, South Carolina Georgia is uh, 24 and a half point spread according to me now some of these lines have actually moved since I uh, originally laid this thing out on Tuesday evening uh, the Georgia Florida or not Georgia Florida the Missouri Florida line where Missouri was actually favored by three when I did this and said they would cover uh, is now actually flipped and Florida is actually a three-point favorite you know which I don't know I could have went either way with that one you know there's an emotional edge sometimes when you break in a new coach after one uh, gets fired two years ago South Carolina for example Sean Elliott went out and won his first game as uh, interim head coach of the Gamecocks. So, uh, the team played pretty decent under him, uh, except for losing to the Citadel. We won't talk about that. But, uh, it can bring a little bit of, uh, of juice uh, when you get a new guy in there. But uh, I, I still don't, I'm not going to uh, change my pick on that one. I still think Missouri takes care of them at home. I just think Florida sucks. Okay, South Carolina, Georgia, 24 and a half point favorite according to this of the dogs. You know, this is one of the oldest rivalries uh, in the South. Uh, Georgia has been very dominant in it. Uh, South Carolina's had some decent, uh, given them some decent goes of late. Uh, the past two years, not so much, but, uh, you know, 2011 comes to mind. That was a classic matchup between these two in Athens. We hooked it up, Carolina, and then we're both ranked inside the top 10. The Gamecocks pulled that one out. It was like 45-42, I think, the second game of the season. Great game. Uh, 2012, they uh, came to Columbia, ranked like number three in the country, and uh, we took them about behind the woodshed. We came in ranked like number six or seven. It was 35-7. Next year in Athens uh, was basically the de facto SEC East title game uh, the second week of the season. And uh, they they beat us. I think that score was something like, uh, I think it was something like 31-24, to 34-21, something like that. It was, a, it was a pretty close score, but... Uh, 
they really controlled that whole game. And 2014 uh, was the year where we opened up against Texas A&M. We kicked off the SEC Network with a big goose egg. Lost that game 52-28. Uh, came back one against East Carolina the next week. And then we played Georgia at home. I think they were like 10-point favorites against us. And uh, we beat them 38-35. And uh, remember Todd Ellis, Gamecock play-by-play uh, -play man, exclaiming where has this team been all year so i don't know if you're going to see that happen this week uh georgia is just too much to handle been too much to handle for a lot of teams first off their defense is good right in top side top five they're right number one by the way uh is playoff rankings and uh their offense is ranked inside the top five nationally you know, it's, it's okay. You can stack the box for a while against them, but their quarterback, Jake Fromm, he's a pretty decent passer. <laughs> so you're kind of screwed all the way around. It's kind of, it, it, it's going to be up to Kurt Roper and him to develop a really good game plan. I think they're going to do it. Uh, I think South Carolina is going to cover the spread in this game, uh, to be honest with you. I don't think we're going to win. Uh, that would take some kind of minor miracle. We just don't have the depth. We don't have the depth. Uh, you know, we may be able to stop Nick Chubb. But we ain't going to stop Nick Chubb, Tony Michelle, Brian Harrion, Holyfield, the, whoever else they got. Uh, they got like 15 running backs, so I don't think we're going to stop all of them. I do think we're going to cover the spread. I think that Coach Muschamp is a good game day coach. I think Kurt Roper will come up with a decent plan to try to move the ball to keep the UGA offense off the field. But in the end, I don't think it's going to be enough. I see it this being like a 14, 17 point loss for us, but I think we're going to give them a better showing than a lot of the teams that they face this year have done. Georgia will take the win tomorrow afternoon in San Francisco Stadium. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Uh, State is a two and a half point favorite. I'm going to look for them to cover the spread in this game and win it. Both of them are, are one loss teams. Uh, both not totally out of the playoff picture. Um, but if Oklahoma wins this game and is able to win out, they definitely could sneak in there. Uh, they have uh, they have a better win uh, out of conference, the Ohio State win, where they actually went to Columbus and not didn't just beat Ohio State. Uh, they beat them soundly. Uh, Oklahoma State looked really good early in the season. Their offense was clicking on all cylinders. Kind of hit a little bit of a hiccup. Uh, you know, with a, had, had a loss there, but uh, they're still uh, very formidable, and I think they're going to take the win tomorrow in the Bedlam rivalry game over Oklahoma. Should be a really good, one of the more interesting matchups of the day. Uh, you have uh, Cincinnati on the road at Tulane. Tulane is a five and a half point favorite at home. Take the Green Wave in this one. Cincinnati is terrible. Uh, Tulane. Their record is not good, but they have played uh, some decent ball this year. They played a close game with Army. Uh, also played a close. They played uh, South Florida pretty close. Came back, made that a tight ball game at the end. It was 34-28. They lost uh, at home. I'm going to look for them to cover the spread here and uh, handle Cincinnati with ease. Uh, you got Texas on the road at TCU. Seven-point favorite the Horn Frogs are. Uh, if you'll go back and look at Texas, Texas doesn't have a great record, but they are much like uh, they're like Indiana. I was talked about yesterday in the last video. All they've done all year long is play close games. Uh, if you'll look at their games, they have not lost one by more than ten points. Their worst loss of the season was that loss at Maryland, open uh, opening game of the year, which was a ten-point loss. That's their worst loss all year. Uh, you know, Oklahoma, they kept that one close. Uh, they've kept their other losses really close. I don't think they're going to win this game at TCU. They could. It wouldn't surprise me if they did. But uh, I don't think that it's – I don't think that TCU is going to cover that seven-point spread. I think the Longhorns will cover it uh, and keep this game close. This should be like – this might be like a one- or two-point affair. Southern Miss on the road at Tennessee. What's going to, is Butch Jones, is Butchie going to get a win here? Yeah. Butchie's going to get a win here. Uh, their offense finally uh, saw some daylight last week against Kentucky. Uh, they lost the game. 
I ended up, I marked that one off that I had lost that one against the spread. I picked Tennessee to cover the spread. But I was thinking in my head, I picked them to win it outright. And I thought they would upset Kentucky and went all right. And the damn near did. Uh, and I marked that down as a loss, but I did actually cover the spread there. It was five and a half points, and uh, they lost 29-26. Uh, this week, the spread is uh, six and a half points in Neyland Stadium. That extra little half point there is going to be critical. I think Tennessee is going to cover the spread here, and I think they're going to win this game. Uh, Southern Miss has... Uh, uh, is a very mediocre team. Uh, it's very mediocre in uh, Conference USA that they play in. You know, they have some close wins against La Tech. And uh, don't say nothing about close wins against La Tech. I know UTEP, terrible team, terrible teams. And, uh, they, and then they've kept it close with Southern Miss, so I don't see them uh, being able to uh, win in Knoxville tomorrow. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, Tennessee will get the win in that one. Uh, LSU at Alabama. LSU's been playing a lot better ball lately. Uh, they have a win against Auburn uh, at home. Uh, beat Florida on the road. Uh, beat Ole Miss. Uh, you know, neither one of those are barn burner teams, but they did win uh, after that loss to Troy. I'm going to look. There's a 21 point uh, spread there against the uh, Crimson Tide. I'm going to look for LSU to cover the spread in that game. I don't think they'll win it. It'll probably be like a two touchdown loss, but uh, look for the uh, Bayou Bengals to not go down without a fight. And that one, Vitek at Miami. Virginia Tech is a two and a half point favorite on the road against the unbeaten Hurricanes. So that shows you uh, how much uh, respect the Hurricanes are getting out there. Not a lot. And I've made videos about them before, and I don't care. I hate on them. Uh, they have. Uh, just you know they just mediocre uh wins against mediocre teams you know anybody would be undefeated with that schedule anybody would i mean look at who they played it's terrible absolutely pathetic and piss poor and i know that it's scheduled i mean that's not their fault it's been a conference schedule i understand that it's not their fault fsu's down but you know they're just a victim of the system they play in so uh i'm gonna look for virginia tech to cover the spread here, uh, win that game outright. Virginia Tech, I think, is a much better football team than people realize. They're very solid defensively, and uh, they're starting to come around offense. The only game that they really uh, have not had a chance in all year was, of course, their only loss to Clemson. Uh, that, that right there is probably, in my opinion, Clemson's most impressive win of the year was the uh, win in Lane Stadium. Say what you want to about Wofford, not Wofford, <laughs> Auburn, Auburn. I'm not sold on them either. Uh, I got to get here through this quick here. Oregon at Washington. Washington's uh, 17 and a half point favorite. I'm going to look for them to cover the spread. They've been playing better lately. Uh, they only have the one loss to Arizona State. That was an anomaly. Uh, Oregon, not very good. They've just been getting blown out lately. What happened to them? You know, they, I mean, just what, three years ago, they were an elite team. They're not now. Oh, I got some elite looking uniforms. Uh, South Florida on the road at UConn. They're 23 and a half point favorites. The Bulls. The Bulls. Cover the spread all day. Did you see what UConn did last week against Missouri? Huh. Not much. Except give up points. 52 to 12. Do uh, you think South Florida is better than Missouri? I certainly do. Cover that spread easily take the Bulls. They uh, suffered their first loss setback against Houston. They're going to come out swinging. Final game, and this one I just kind of threw in there because uh, I needed some filler, but uh, it is an interesting line, and I don't really uh, understand it at all. Georgia State, the fighting Sean Elliott, who we mentioned earlier, the Panthers, are on the road at Georgia Southern, former uh, Southern Conference powerhouse, uh, former uh, subject of, uh, of much, uh, much uh, making, make fun making of the University of Florida for losing to them at home a few years ago. Uh, Georgia Southern's four point favorites over Georgia State at home. I don't understand that. Look at the records too. 
Georgia Southern uh, is a much worse record than Georgia State. I'm going to take the Panthers in this one to cover the spread and win that game. Let's see how I do. Y'all tune in the first part of next week. Carolina Jackpot checking out. Go Cox. Woo!